Next, I'm going to talk about what you can get if you win under this law. There are certain things that are mandatory that if you win, the court must award that. When I refer to court, I'm talking to about the Department of Labor, which will be, we'll, and we'll talk about that process too, how it works, OSHA or a Department of Labor judge. So what you get if you win, mandatory. If you have been fired, your former employer will be ordered to offer you reinstatement. You can get on the witness stand and say, I don't want this job back. But the court, and a Department of Labor judge or OSHA, wherever we're pending, must order, if you've been fired in violation of the statute, the STAA, the court must order an offer of reinstatement to be made to you. And then you can decline it. Two, if you win, you are automatically entitled to your back pay what you would have received but for the firing, so if you're out of work for two weeks, less what you earned in the interim. So if you're out of work for 10 months because you've been fired because you wouldn't violate hours of service or drive in bad weather, you called DOT on the company and you're fired because of that and you're out of work for 10 months and after 10 months you find a job that paid you 100 bucks less than you were making at your previous employer, you're entitled to 10 months of back pay plus that 100 a week that starts accruing after that. You do have to, however, look for work. You have to do what's called attempt to mitigate damages. Think of this scenario. If you're in a car crash, you're driving your vehicle, you have the right of way, you're going through a green light, and a drunk driver at 90 miles an hour T-bones you and sends you, you know, your head's bleeding open, you got a broken bone, you got to go to the hospital. Same thing when you're fired illegally, you need to look for substantially equivalent work. So if you're fired because you won't break a safety regulation or you make com a complaint about a violation of a commercial vehicle safety regulation, immediately start looking for substantially equivalent work keep a log, keep notes, what you were told, and you can't turn down a job that's substantially equivalent without risking a win of back pay. So a substantially equivalent uh, job, uh, and this was in a case called uh, Carter versus Martin Transport, the Department of Labor, what they call their administrative review board, which is like an appeals court within the Department of Labor, said that a substantially equivalent job uh, is uh, one that is uh, equivalent in terms of pay terms and conditions of employment. So conditions of employment might mean if you have a job that gets you home every night or twice a week, you don't have to take a job with Swift and stay out for 12 weeks. Um, if you have a job, if you're working for UPS and you have a job, you had a job there with a pension, a good pension, you don't have to take a job that doesn't offer a pension. But essentially, you know, a lot of trucking companies pay about the same. You know, if you're talking Covenant, uh, Swift, um, Martin, Heartland, I mean, those are all very substantially equivalent jobs. So you have to at least make an effort to mitigate your damages. So you can get reinstatement and back pay. Two things are mandatory. Third, something that's not mandatory is that you may be entitled to what we call compensatory damages, which could include the bus ticket home, okay? Or damages if you lost your health insurance and you got stuck with medical bills because of an illegal firing. But compensatory damages can also include damages for mental pain and emotional distress caused by a firing. I have uh, had a lot of these cases. We, our office has done about 1,200 STA cases in 20 years, 22 years now. And in some cases we get mental pain, some we don't. Typical pain and suffering awards that are substantial money is where somebody has been evicted from a home, borrowed from relatives, contemplated suicide, um, uh, got a house foreclosed, went on food stamps, these are things that cause real emotional pain even without medical evidence. And the Department of Labor said very clearly in a case called Ferguson versus Prime that uh, medical 
evidence is not required to prove compensatory damages for mental pain and emotional distress. So reinstatement is a mandatory remedy. Back pay is mandatory. In other words, they have to offer it to you and have to pay you back pay. Compensatory damages that you can prove will be awarded. Uh, don't plan your retirement on it. Next, a non-mandatory remedy is punitive damages. Punitive damages are damages meant to punish an employer. And by the way, I've used the term employer throughout, but that the punishment can be upon, you can bring these cases against the employer or any person working for the employer. The statute says no person may retaliate. Now, employee for purpose of the statute includes owner operators. So uh, I just, I should have made that clear at the outset. So talking about punitive damages, to get punitive damages, and the statute allows punitive damage awards of up to $250,000. To get a punitive damages award, you have to prove one, that regular damages are insufficient to punish the employer. Two, that punishment is necessary because they have reflected a policy of retaliation for protected activity or that it, this is coming from a high level of management. We don't get punitive damages if it's a rogue dispatcher retaliating against you. If it's a dispatcher supervisor or the vice president or president of the company or the safety supervisor or HR, more likely you're going to get punitive damages. So one, you have to prove that punitive damages necess are necessary to pun punish in order to deter future violations of the statute. And you have to prove that it comes from a higher level of management or the retaliation reflects policies written or unwritten. And three, if those things are in place and the court determines, or in this case the Department of Labor determines, how much money is necessary to deter retaliation. Huge punitive damage awards are not going to come in cases against the eight truck operator out of suburban Chicago they're going to come against big trucking companies. Punitive damages in our cases has come against companies like r &L and Prime and some others, UPS. So the bigger they are, the more likely there's going to be punitive damages, frankly, because it takes a lot more money to punish somebody in order to deter for future retaliation for protected activity. One of the other things the statute provides for is that if you win, the employer will be ordered to pay your attorney's fees and costs. Now we work on a contingent fee, but it's contingent hourly. Uh, it's a blended formula of percentage and hourly. But if we prevail and we are working on your behalf or some other lawyer, because I'm not the only lawyer who does this. I happen to think we're the best out there, but that's me. And uh, they'll be ordered to pay attorney's fees. So if you have attorney's fees bills, plus costs of bringing the litigation, that is something that will be automatically awarded uh, to you. In other words, the other side will be directed to pay your attorneys, or if you have paid your attorney directly to reimburse you those attorney's expenses. Finally, one of the things you can get if you prevail under the statute is a clean DAC report, at least cleaning up those things that are retaliatory and a purging of the employment files. We're going to take a break for a little bit and then we'll come right back to talk about some specific instances under the statute. Thanks for watching so far.